Hey there! This is a very special video, not only because it's my yearly setup, but this will be the first video that I upload in two different languages. Don't worry, I will keep on uploading on English, but that same video is going to be available in Spanish as well. And I am talking only about those where I do voiceovers. As I am filling my fountain pen with ink, I will explain why I made this decision. In a nutshell, I have been making videos only in English because the bullet journal community shares that language in common like the most. But two years into this, I've realized how important it would be to make videos in my mother tongue for those who enjoy seeing my videos, but many times they comment in Spanish and I'm left wondering how much of the video they understand. So that is essentially why I decided to start doing videos in my own mother tongue. So anyway, let's get started with this setup. The notebook is from the washi tape shop. I am obsessed with this notebook. I love the cover. I love the paper. You can watch my first impressions video on it, but I've just been loving it. The ink I decided to use is this beautiful blue and it's Tanzanite Sky from Ferris Wilpress. In the camera, you can't really see the true tone, but it's very similar to the blue on the cover, a little bit darker perhaps, but you will see it more clearly when I start drawing in a few minutes. So speaking about my quote, this quote is in Spanish and it's from a song called The Flowers, that's the translation, from a Mexican band that is named Café La Cuba. And basically what it says is and that each star would be a flower so that I could give you a whole bouquet of stars. I love the sound of it in Spanish, of course, the meaning is really cute and nice and to me it's really about giving, you know, we give flowers as a symbol of love or appreciation for someone and here it's talking about how much more this gesture would be, it would be a lot more intense if those flowers were stars. So I really love the meaning of this and I think it went really well with my overall theme, which of course is flower inspired because of that journal cover. So here you see me now drawing that little truck and that's the same ink that I'm using for the whole setup. This time I diluted it with some water and now you can see how it comes up with these different tones of blues, shades of blues more correctly and I just loved it. I thought it was the exact same blue of the cover and it goes really well. So I am just going to shade it a little bit more using more ink. I love shading with inks, it's just so easy. And then I'm just adding a little bit of washi tape there on the truck bed so that it can be like this mobile flower shop. This idea was inspired by Rayleigh Autumn here in YouTube. She's an amazing bullet journaler who actually sells custom bullet journals and she used this exactly same washi tape for one of her themes. The truck she made was different, it was black, but I got the inspiration from her and I really love how it looked. And of course, this would not be complete without my metallic watercolor, so I just added a frame there, a few little stars, and then I also added some final details with this jelly roll pen in white. I love how those tiny traces of white bring so much life and light into a drawing. I always love to start my journals with a quote like this and a nice cover, not only because it looks pretty, but I think it's also motivational for the year to come. We always expect the years to be better and better, so this is a good start. Moving on to my next spread, 
if this is the first time you are setting up a bullet journal, I would highly advise you to make a jeer at a glance spread. Personally, it's one of the spreads that I use the most and it's just a calendar of 2022. You could, of course, Google an image of the calendar, print it and paste it, but I just love doing it myself. Ever since I was little, I enjoyed drawing the stones on the road, the leaves of a tree, all those tiny details keep me entertained. I don't know why, and I seem to have the patience for it. So even when my hand gets really tired, I always like to do these numbers by hand. And fun fact is that this is the first time in three journals that I don't make a mistake in this exact spread. I have mistaken the month in the first one, then I made a mistake in the numbers in the second year. And this was the first time that I didn't make a mistake. So I think that's a really good thing. It made me feel a lot of satisfaction. And then of course this page felt kind of empty so I am grabbing this beautiful ink by Herbin. I will list all the things I'm using below and I'm just drawing some flowers along the lower margin. This goes into the next page where the index is gonna be and it's kind of a simple doodle but I think it really brings so much life to the pages. So this is just the index, very simple spread. It looks a lot better once it's filled and it's really useful. If it's your first time journaling, don't forget to add it and your future self will be grateful. Now I am moving on to the future log, which to be honest, in the two years that I have been bullet journaling, which are basically the two years of the pandemic, I haven't used it much. So I still add it because, you know, the bullet journal is a method where you don't set all year at once. You go week by week or day by day. And so you don't have a place to write down the future events except for the future log. So I think it's still important to have it so that you won't miss or misplace some important events. And for me, this layout works because I added again all the months. I made lots of numbers again and add a nice, pretty and thick title in the middle. And so I left a few spaces to write down some important dates as they come. And that's it. This is the layout that works for me. Of course, each one will have different needs and you can make this to be on as many pages as you need to. The important thing is that you do have this space so that you can plan ahead for those important dates. So this is what I was talking about, a lot more numbers. My hand was cramping by now, but I think these are the last numbers that I will be writing for now. This next spread is one that I made up, which is the Jeer Wheel. You can watch a video that I made with the complete explanation of where my inspiration came from and how to use it, but basically it's like a small wheel of memories. I doodle or write little phrases with nice lettering of every single highlight of my month. So each wedge is one month and I just fill it with tiny drawings of what happened, of things I want to remember, and by the end of the year it is filled with this beautiful array of happy colors and memories and phrases. It's something that I've been loving to do every year and it takes just a couple of seconds a day and in the end it's a very very nice memory to keep. Now for the next spread, which is my routines spread, which is kind of a highlight of my journal since last year, I decided to make a routines bar. The idea came from this store where I 
buy inks from. They have an ink bar where you basically can buy doses of ink, as many as or as little as you want. And so I thought why not make a routines bar where I can pick what habits I can make each day. You know, I'm gonna write down my ideal morning and night routines with all the healthy habits that I am supposed to do. But to be totally reasonable, you cannot make everything you would like to in one day. I mean, it's rare that it happens. But so I just decided to use this title to show how flexible it is. In that way, I don't feel bad if I don't do or if I miss some part of it. And it's like routines a la carte, you know. It's a menu, you pick what you can do, what will make you happy that day. And I really love doing it in this black paper and set this kind of flower shop that I think it goes really well with the overall theme. Next to it, and this is a spread that I introduce in my second journal of 2021. I call this my happy place, but it's more like the things that would make of one day the ideal day. And it's like an emergency plan. What I mean to say is that all of us have days or seasons when we are really stressing and we can't wait to just change our routines. And so when we get one free day, this is like the plan, you know? Like here I am starting with sun baths, which during the pandemic when we are all the time at home, it's important to go out and take some sun. And then I continue with swimming, which is one of my favorite sports. Complete sport, it energizes me makes me feel a lot better and healthier and then of course the breakfast which is my favorite meal of the day followed by my journaling which is paramount these days because it allows me to set my priorities see what tasks I need to get done and stuff like that and then I drew a computer where I just sit down most of the day doing work and that's the part of the day where I like to be productive. Then I added a cooking doodle because cooking has become really a very nice part of my day. During breakfast, I get to be in the kitchen with my dad and we talk a lot. He's a chemistry engineer. So whatever things I ask, he always knows so much and he gives thorough explanations. He was a teacher as well, so you can imagine how much he enjoys my questions and I enjoy listening to him. And the same goes at lunchtime, where I get to be with my mom in the kitchen and we cook together and we talk. She's also a chemist. They actually met at the university. And, you know, the relationship with my mom is different because we both are women, so we're closer in some aspects but all in all cooking and the kitchen have become very special places of my house to me because of what goes on in there that is why I added that heart that you see which symbolizes family time which would be essential for an ideal day and then I just added the beach which is my favorite place in the world lunch at a cozy nice little restaurant i think the perfect lunch is the one that you get to have outside you don't have to cook you just enjoy the food and the company and then on the last road i drew myself walking with a dog which i don't have because i'm allergic but at least i can draw it and then also i added some tea time which i am a tea person i just love the variety and to finish it all, I added some stretches. Again, with this pandemic, it has become more important than ever to move, to stretch, to get the body working. Otherwise, you kind of get rusty and then everything starts to hurt. But anyway, I think this is a great idea to have like a plan if you get a free day in your life and you want to do all your favorite things. 
the more you can do the best and so I really love how it ended up looking with that golden details I think this was a very easy page to set it took some time but I just drew very freely using that wash and I just really love the end result I hope this gives you some inspiration for your own spread as well This next spread is a list of the items I need to have in my go bag or my emergency backpack. This is something that I've had ever since I lived in Mexico City because over there the earthquakes were like terrifying. The last one from 2017 left me traumatized for quite a while. I don't live there anymore but now I live in a place where we have hurricanes so the danger of flooding is not really serious but it could happen so it's always better to be ready so i just make a list of all the things that i should have in there and when it comes to food i also write a space to put the expiration dates so i like to go through it every year to make sure that everything is on a good condition or if anything needs to be replaced so I can't stress enough the importance of having one of these wherever you might live you need to have the things that might save your life handy the next page is going to hold my waiting for list this is something that I've used so much especially with this pandemic again I don't know how many times I've said pandemic but you know how everybody's ordering online now and so some packages take longer to arrive so I like to write like the maximum date of delivery so that I can contact the company if needed and I am drawing this beautiful flower shop just with that gold watercolor because I like to you know decorate this plain page and I just loved how it looked so it's something that I will be going back to a lot and I might as well make it look pretty I think this is quite a common spread in everybody's bullet journals because it really is handy to know what things you're waiting for and what things you should like even have to return or stuff like that Moving on to the next page, this is the final spread for the initial part of my journal and here in Mexico we have to declare our taxes every two months. So that's why I created this layout where I will be writing down my earnings and all the things that I need to know in order to share it with my accountant and at the end of every two months we can make my declaration so yeah it's really like a boring thing to have here but it's necessary because i i don't want to miss a detail otherwise i might be in trouble but anyway if you like me have to pay taxes already this might be something you want to include in your journal to have handy now I am going back to the start of the journal because I was forgetting to add my key. If you already bullet journal, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, read the book. I always mention the importance of reading the book by Ryder Carl, the bullet journal method. You need to understand the basics in order to start bullet journaling, in order to be productive. and reach your goals and get your tasks done so I have a complete video speaking of this a lot more in detail and I will link it below but please read the book if you are very interested in starting your own bullet journal because that's the only way you're going to get the basics and then you can add all the bells and whistles that many in the bullet journal community like to add like me but in the end are not really necessary as long as you are doing the basics you are good and the bullet journal will work for you and now I am going to go to the 
end of the journal where I set up my social media panel. This is a layout that I've been working with since 2021 and this really works for me because I get to see an overview of the month and I can plan all the different posts on the days that I need to. In this way, I don't miss a post and my followers have some consistency and they can just keep up to date with my publications. So it's a very basic spread, but it's really useful. I just make these squares that I can fill in with each post. And then I have this color code method where that's what it is basically. I assign a color to each different kind of post, both for YouTube and then for Instagram. And that's how I plan throughout the month the things that I need to be posting. At the end of the spread, I add this little subscriber tracker, which allows me to see my growth. And now we've arrived to the final flip through. I really love how this theme turned out. That journal inspired me so much, along with that washi tape, of course, which I bought specifically to adorn my 2022 setup. So I hope that it gave you some ideas that you enjoyed it, not only watching me set it up, but also the explanations that I gave you, the descriptions of why I added the things that I added and you know the new ideas that this might give you. I would love to see them. If you use Instagram, please tag me at Nala Shore. I love seeing when you recreate my spreads or even if just inspire you in a certain way. That is really satisfying. It's really fulfilling and that's the reason why I do this. So that you guys can get the most out of your journals, especially if you use it as a creative outlet as I do. This is it for this video and I'm gonna tell you that I have a special announcement that I will be making during my January setup that will happen almost when December ends so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. If you're new, subscribe for more journaling content and as usual, thank you so much for watching.